Hi everyone and welcome to this new video. I hope you're doing well. Today we're going to talk about custom light systems in photo modes. I'm going to share my top five with you, but before I do that, I want to be clear. First, I don't know every custom light system out there. I obviously didn't use them all. So let me know in the comment if you recommend one that I didn't mention. Secondly, this is not a ranking per se. I did organize them from worst to best according to my criteria, but it really depends on what is the most important to you. For instance, I give a lot of importance to light movement management over other features or settings. So maybe you're really fine with awkward movements and therefore your number one would be different. My goal here is always to provide critique and help developers to understand what is or isn't needed. So I use five different types of light systems to illustrate choices that studios made and help other studios see what options exist or should exist. And finally, we talk about custom light only here. So don't come at me because your favorite game has a poor one or if your favorite photo mode is not the first on my list because the light system is not as good as it could have been. Okay, so with all that out of the way, please consider subscribing to the channel if you discover it and if you liked what you saw by the end of the video. Uh, my name is Shinobi, I'm a virtual photographer and today we shed a light on this more and more popular feature soon to be hopefully mandatory in any photo mode, custom light system. Let's go! Number 5. Star Wars Jedi Survivor Okay, I'm not gonna lie, I have a soft spot for this one. Maybe because Jedi Fallen Order was the first photo mode I saw with a light system, if you exclude Warframe that had already a three-point light system in the capture mode, but whatever. And also maybe <clears throat> the way you place the spot is weird, but I'm used to it because of what we used on we use on PC. But if you actually watch it closely, it's pretty meh. In this one, you spawn your light sources. You can have three uh, where your camera is. It means that you have to use this with the save camera position feature. So you save your camera position. You go to the lights tab. You go place your spotlight where you want it. And you charge your camera position save to go back on your composition frame. It might sound awkward uh, said like this, but actually, even if it's not the best way to handle light sources positioning, it works and becomes even convenient in some cases. Again, it's close to what we have on PC, so maybe that's why I'm fine with it. Now, anyway, this is not enough. Uh, you should be able, once you placed your spotlight and came back to your composition frame, to just move the spot around at your will to fine tune and adjust your lighting without having to go back and put a new spotlight. You know, something more user friendly would be nice. The rest of the features are really basic. So you have six preset colors only and their intensity. The intensity even acts a bit weird because each tick of the slider uh, will change the light intensity a bit too brutally to my taste. So in one word, this is just too simple. It lacks a lot of uh, possible settings that you will find on other, uh, on other custom light systems in this top five. So pros. Well, three sources, I guess it's better than one. Mm, the placement is weirdly convenient. Maybe that's just me, so you decide. Uh, it's probably cool for virtual photography beginners to just get an idea on how light is important without feeling overwhelmed. I don't know, I try to stay positive here, guys, okay? Cons. There are not a lot of cons because there are not a lot of things in the photo mode, in, in the custom light system to begin with but you know it, it kind of it's it's kind of a, a, a big cons uh, there's just too few settings uh, and not even well implemented so it lacks softness radius custom colors uh, environment lights and a lot of things actually so that's it number four 
Alan Wake 2. Okay, I'm gonna be blunt with this one. As much as I like Remedy, the game itself, etc. Well, maybe because I like them that much, the photo mode, although very decent, came out very short for me on that light system. So I guess I'm a bit more disappointed by it because it's a very recent one too and that could have benefit from every other one existing before it. So let's see. So you have three types of light sources, which is a good start. You have camera flash that emulates a camera flash that it lights everything in front of you in a flat way. You have portrait spot that is designed to light your character and a flashlight emulating the player's flashlight with the same texture that you have in the game. For each of these light sources, you have the same set of options, intensity, color, source radius and field of view. So intensity, source radius and field of view work fine. They allow you a certain degree of control over your lighting and that's very cool. No problem here. But the first issue emerges with the color part for me. For who knows what reason, they decided to come up with a pre-selection of not even six colors like we saw in Jedi Survivor, but four. And I say four, I'm, I'm even nice because I include the white, that is the neutral light. So it's more like three colors, really. You have a burning red and a blonde blue and yellow. This is a terrible missed opportunity really i can't see any reason for them to not let us choose our own color in 2024 after so many custom light systems got released so you know now but wait it got worse for me at least when i realized that the different types of light sources are not only very different in nature but also exclusive to each other's that's, you know, now, so it means that the portrait spot, for instance, the portrait one, it works on an orbital axe around your character. Of course, it's made for portrait lighting, but you will not be able to use it to light something else on in the scene. As if the only thing that people would want to shoot was Saga or Alan. Come on, no. For shooting something else, you have the light torch that is a free movement light but with that terrible uh, texture that you really don't need to light most of the objects or whatever so again i need to say this relentlessly and i'll die on that hill photo mode is a different gameplay right it answers different needs has different goals no photographer cares to keep your gameplay in their shot or to be forced to do so. If you decide to give the light source a torch lamp texture to fit your world, fine, it's a good idea, really. But just put the option to activate the, the texture on any light spot and make those light spots free of movement so we can use them where we need them, not where you want them. That's really the basic of helping the creativity of players uh, developing. So, pros. Uh, light system is really easy to use and to understand. That's, that's a good point, really. You can act on your lights and move them around with the UI hidden. This is already overlooked on most photo mode themselves, but even more on custom light systems. So that's, that's a good idea to have. Cons. You know, not being able to accumulate and combine different light sources. It's, uh, it's a big miss. Three colors only plus the white. Not even possible to change their saturation. No. The mix of orbital and free movement for different lights makes it a bit confusing and uh, it makes them both crippled actually when it was easy to combine their strengths in my opinion. Number three, The Last of Us Part 2. Uh, the Last of Us 2 has a photo mode that I really, really dislike. Uh, I think I've made this pretty clear in this video, but at least it has a custom light system and the features and options themselves are pretty great, to be honest. You have a good control on the type of light source, the strength of it. You can act on the spread, the softness, the distance, etc. 
But just like the whole photo mode, it offers a terrible movement management. It's a pain to even understand how to move these lights. So you have two separated modes, one to move the spot itself and one to rotate it, both on the same control stick. And you switch from one mode to the next by pressing the touchpad, the central touchpad. This is the opposite of intuitive. Couple that with the fact that cams moves orbitally and suffer the same issues than the actual photo mode camera. And there you go, a great light system, but so frustrating to use that I'd rather play another game. <laughs> so, you know. Key teaching here, um, don't do orbit spots. Just like you need to rethink your camera movement for the photo mode because it's not the actual gameplay, you also need to think about all the movements in your light system itself because it's again a different gameplay, a different way to use it for a different purpose. We need to be able to uh, move our lights around to light anything we need in the, in the scene. Pros, very good amount of settings. Three separate light sources. It's not enough still, but it's not bad. Uh, freedom in color settings. You can choose and pick your, your own uh, color. And you have also a pre-selection of a few colors. So it's really great to have both choices. Cons, well, not a lot, but again, that's a big one for me. Movements are so bad that I'd rather use the actual in-game light instead of using the custom light system. Also, you have no control over the environmental lighting and it was true for the other photo modes we talked about so far, but in this one it's even a bit more painful to not have because the, the light, the actual game light is so great. It would be nice to have a bit of control on the intensity of the, the, the scenery lighting. Number two, Marvel Spider-Man 2. Okay, maybe a lot of you will think, how isn't this number one? But it's a good time to remind you that this is not a ranking. <laughs> and my personal pleasure of using them is also a factor. A factor. Um, how old or recent they are is also a factor and so on. Honestly, I could have put this one in first place because it's still one of the most solid ones we have for years now. And actually, that's the first issue for me. It didn't really evolve and even became a bit less performant than the first iteration in some cases. But hey, overall, it's a great model to follow and hopefully to enhance for future games. This one has a lot of very needed options. Three different light sources of two types, sphere and spotlight. It can cast shadows or not, uh, which is really cool. It's a fully customizable color selection. You can choose uh, any color you want. It's intensity, spread, softness, distance, all needed, all given, on point. Perfect. Now, the movement of this spotlight is not the greatest to me. It's not always easy to switch from your composition frame to a wider view to actually spot your spotlights. <laughs> but hey, they did put a system in place that allows you to do it. So it's not really a problem per se. It's just not the perfect way to, to, to navigate. Again, all the lights are orbital around the character, but you can turn them around on their axe so you can still light something else, but it has to be close from your character, somehow close. Another great thing in this one is the possibility to finally act on the environment light. I can't understand how other PMs that came after this one didn't see how crucial it is. Being able to make a full dark or use the sun position as another light source is a game changer. That's really a great uh, thing to have in your custom light system. Pros, um, environment light settings, really needed. Three sources, not enough, but two possible types. Also free color selection. I mean, yeah. The cast shadow or not is really cool because your shot aesthetic and composition is more important than realistic lighting sometimes. 
and you want to have this small detail in the shot but a natural lighting would prevent it there you go you have an option to just make the light go through and uh, it, it really helps in some scenario it's a detail I, I give you that but it's a detail that I think is important in a custom light system Cons, well, movement, I guess it's okay, but it's annoying at times, at least for me. Also, the intensity setting doesn't go low enough. Why not give us the possibility to go all the way down to zero so we can adjust exactly how we want it? Because in certain scenarios of lighting, you really need some slight differences and it, it might help. I know, again, very small details, but you know me, that's what I do. Number one. Hellblade 2. Hellblade 2 took me by surprise with its light system. It's fresh, it's inventive, it didn't just copy paste something existing and popular, and it feels like they took the time to think it through. First of all, you have two different tabs in the PM for the light system. One will set the nature of your light source, and the other one all the settings of the light itself. So you have three light sources only, unfortunately, because yes, for some reason, the whole world seemed to think that three is the maximum light we would use. Spoiler alert, it is not. The most satisfying thing for me was the way to move these lights around. Finally, a PM that is intuitive. As soon as you spawn your light, the camera controls become the light control and you can move it around freely. The light visualization might be a bit big at times, but at least you understand right away where they are and where they go. They are all free movement lights, so you can literally place them where you need them, even inside the character which is really great. You can easily hide them separately too, very convenient when you work on a shot and try different lighting, compare, change your mind, etc. You can switch from the camera movement to the light movement very easily and clearly, and choose if the light will also act on the ambient fog, objects, or just the character. Very clever in this specific game. The second tab will give you a good bunch of settings on your light. So again, you can select each of the three sources separately and then change their brightness, <clears throat> color, saturation, softness and range. The color selection only is pretty bad and doesn't help you visualize clearly what color you selected with the cursor being so big. Um, also, I find the brightness a bit too shy and if you really want to lighten up a very dark situation, it, it will not be enough uh, sometimes. You can move all your lights without the UI being apparent, but on the negative side of things, you don't have control on the environment lights. Pros, multiple sources, of course, not enough, but still a pro two separated tabs for more settings and easier navigation. Cool. Very user-friendly movements. It moves without the UI. Really cool. Now cons, uh, color selection is very unclear. Uh, the brightness is too shy, no environmental light, and no cast shadows on off settings like we saw in Spider-Man. So too bad. All right, so now you have a better understanding of what can be beneficial or not in a photo mode light system, but really the inspiration you should take if you're making one is what PC users have thanks to the universal Unreal Engine 5 unlocker by Franz Buma, the one and only. Um, it might not be the easiest one to use and read if you're a casual photographer or a beginner, I mean, you know how PC mods and stuff works, right? It's always more complete, but a bit less user-friendly to some extent. But hey, this tool is not that obscure or intimidating when it comes to the light part. And anyways, that should definitely be the start of your thought process. How do I do this in my photo mode? 
I'm not gonna do a full breakdown of this tool here because the video is about photo modes and I don't want to make this a demonstration of this specific tool. But I'll tell you what it has that no other light systems I've seen so far have. Infinite amount of light sources. Because yeah, we need a lot of light sources. Not three. Almost infinite amount of customization of each of them. You can play on the radius, the size, the brightness, the, the, the volumetric uh, lighting, the source shape. Uh, a lot of things that are very, very useful. So check it out super efficient and multiple ways to move these lights you attach it to the camera and you go to the the place you want to place it like in jedi survivor you detach it boom you're back where your camera was there there is no really big deal with this it's one click away uh, you want to bring back your camera to that super far light source same one click boom you're there that's really, really convenient. You want to move the light sources from afar with the X, Y, Z coordinates. Sure, go ahead. It's there. You can do it. So, you know, all this type of stuff is very important. Also, you can play on most environment lights. So you can go full black and then recreate your personal lighting on the scene. Even it cut scenes, by the way. So really really interesting so if you don't know it yet and are interested in uh, check it out on France patreon the link is in the description below of course um, it's a you know it's a tool that allows players to create their own world instead of just lighting the one given by the game to me it's the biggest challenge developers have to face when it comes to photo modes forget themselves and their game just enough to allow photographers worlds to emerge Another change of mentality that will take a bit of time to activate, but well, we'll get there. Thank you all for watching this video. Like it, share it, comment it, subscribe. If you're a developer or you're in contact with developers in charge of photo mode, I hope you find this valuable advices. Um, you can reach out to me from my website anytime for more personalized help as I did in the past for different games. Follow me on X or Instagram, I'll see you in the next video, and be well, be nice, and keep snapping. Bye guys.